All right, so Zug, you got this scroll. You got Harcourt in front of you. You cast the scroll. The, the 20 is a reroll. Like if I fail, I can, or do I have to use it? You have to choose to use it ahead of time. So Tom had his right. birthday uh, much, much earlier. And so Tom, for everybody that has their birthday cross over the stream time, uh, they earn one free D20. And Tom needs to decide whether he wants to use it to potentially save Harcourt or whether he wants to roll. All right, yeah, I'll use the 20. Okay. Uh, so you will, like, you open up the scroll and you cast the Dispel Magic. Um, you are fifth caster level. Uh, so Harcourt, uh, you come running up to him and you feel like uh, there's like a piercing sensation that happens as the mu as the magic kind of hits you from out of nowhere. It feels like something is pushing uh, from your heart and from your head and like burning through your body. And you stop just inches in front of, uh, of Zug. Um, you're like, you're, his face between your legs um, <laughs> as you come to the realization that you don't hear the mind of the succubus screaming at you to do something anymore. Oh. Whatever you hit me with, you better hit me with it again! Are you okay? I don't... And this scroll burns up and lands on the floor below you. Can I get you some ice? Ice, how oh, fuck. She's not in my head anymore. Is there a way that we can Stop verify talking. that? Oh, God. Uh, I mean, there's not a direct way. Uh, perhaps a detect magic? All right, yeah, I can detect magic. Uh, yeah, you notice that there is no residue of magic on Harcourt. Yeah, I think we got it, guys. Good job, Zug! Yay! You should uh, probably get some sleep now. Or go back to whatever we interrupted. Hooray! Yeah, I'll, sure I'll, 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 I'll leave permanent? the room. Okay. Are we sure this is permanent? I sure hope so. Yeah. I'll say yeah as I'm leaving. Okay. Well, at least you're I'll just turn around and walk back to the bed. <laughs> what does Miriam think of all this? She's, like, really confused at the moment. She's, like, looking over what just happened. Zug is, like, casually walking out like he just did nothing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, no big deal. The rest of the party is hanging out, hanging around as Harcourt wanders back naked uh, into the bed. If everything seems like it's over, I'm just gonna leave the room. Yep. Yeah, I'm Let's gonna get some snacks. I'm then. gonna pull out. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm looking for the uh for the best room in here to take uh the best looking room to take over. Uh well I mean the best room is obviously the one that also has the yeah. desk and uh and bookshelves. So you can head on over to uh uh Alicia Alicia's room. Let's bring us over to that, by the way. I'm claiming this room over here, guys. Oops. We don't need the combat Whoa, music I here anymore. Stop that combat music. Seems fair. I want to stay in a room with other people. I don't want to stay by myself. Actually, that's wrong music. Uh, let's play... So you don't want to you don't feel comfortable staying in a room by yourself? Are there there's rooms with multiple beds, right? There are no rooms with multiple were, beds. I think you were already invited to stay in Harcourt's room. Well, the, the technically there is a there is one room <laughs> you were invited actually. Uh there is technically one room that you could stay in that has multiple beds and that is the room in the basement. No. I mean, you could probably just drag one of the beds into. No, they're pretty room. big. She she would not be able to drag them. Galphine could drag, could maybe drag one of these beds into the other room. Galphine, can I stay in bed with you? What? 
<laughs> I just want to stay in the same room. Like, there's no room with two beds. I'm scared here. It's Wait, like a we're sleepover. Here? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Well, let's talk about that. What is the plan for the evening? Do you guys want to kind of watch over Harcourt and make sure everything actually is okay? Kind of. I feel like we shouldn't leave too far from him. Nah, Zug's pretty confident that uh that this situation was taken care of. I feel like Zug would be comp would be confident no matter what though. That seems like Zug's kind of personality. Like, yep, yep, I did it. It's successful. Just trust me on this. All right, so Zug, you are staying in here. Everybody should be on this map, correct? The map with the inn or with the winery? Yeah. Okay. That is such a huge fucking map. Um, and then Harcourt is in a part of the building I don't have mapped in yet. But it's over here. This is around where uh, uh, Ty's room was. He is here with Alicia. Um, so you guys would be out here. Uh, yeah, so what is the plan for the evening? Because it is, like, early evening now, getting close to night. Uh, Pax and Galphine, you're not really tired because you guys slept in the through the afternoon. I want food. Uh, you did I notice you smelled food on the counter. When you guys came in. I don't... Mm. No, like actual food, not like... Human flesh. Why is there food on the counter? Uh, you can go over and investigate. I mean, you like food, so I imagine Pax would immediately. Where's the counter? Uh, it, in the in the other room to the south. There's not. It's not in here. It's in the other room. That I have not I filled. Yet. I filled up on that donut. <laughs> It was pretty big because it's human sized. Yeah. Okay, I'll go look at the food. Okay. Um, this is some kind of rendition of elven food. Uh, it's very fancy, very vegetarian. Very vegetarian. Very vegetarian. No plants were even harmed in the making. Oh no, they're very careful to make sure that like the plants are taken care of as they uh, ease them into the food. These plants went willingly. Why is there just food sitting here? Um, give me a... What this even be? Give me a perception. I'll give you a perception on this to try to figure this out. Not a knowledge local. Well, you gotta look around first. So give me a perception first. Not a knowledge local. <laughs> uh, so you, it looks like, like maybe a pair of people were having dinner. Like the chairs are kind of pushed out. And there's like, it's like laid out, like, you know, some people were having dinner. Do I see any people around? Uh, I mean, you did <laughs> see some people around. Give me a sense motive. You saw them more than around, that's for sure. <laughs> they were a square. Uh, but you're still not quite sure. I mean, this Does could it... be, this could be Harcourt's food, and, but... Maybe somebody else brought food? Nobody else has access to the building, though. Nobody seems to be claiming it, though. What if it makes me sick? I don't want to eat it. You don't want to eat it? Okay. Would it have poisoned me? After a few moments, I'm going to wander out with a towel or something wrapped around me, not dressed. Yeah, there's an additional <laughs> robe if you want to take a robe. Just, like, throw the robe around me and, like, sloppily shut it and wander out and pick something off the tray and then walk back into the bedroom. Okay. <laughs> oh, is this your food? Yeah, well, it's hers. Oh, can I have some? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, now I'll eat some. <laughs> I'm assuming Pax eats the rest. Sure. <laughs> no, I'll share it with um, Meg and Galphine if they're hungry. Okay. I ate two of those pastries, which means that I will be full for oh, quite yeah. a while. I will eat some food. Okay. So the two of you can have the leftovers here. They're a little they're quite a bit cold because they've been sitting around for a few can hours. Can we make now. a little fire to heat them up on? 
Um, yeah, do either of you uh, have survival? I mean, I've survived thus far, haven't I? Do either of you want to give me a survival check to see if you can make a fire in the middle of this uh, winery? Hey! All right. That's how that works. On the wooden floors? No, there's a fireplace somewhere, isn't there? It's a brothel. Like, that seems like a thing a brothel would have. Uh, so you're looking around for a place where you can make this. Uh, there is actually sort of an area you think you could make this. Uh, there's a, a bit of a, like, fireplace sort of thing um, that you go over to. And you get a fire going, and you can cook up the food okay. Great. All right. Uh, the two of you can enjoy the warmed up food. And what's Meg elves, doing during food. this? What's Meg doing? Yeah. I'm just going to sit around and decompress for real. Just kind of like, <sighs> what a day. I'm so full. I've been up all day. Is Meg planning to crash here, or does she want to go back to her place? I do not want to crash here, but if we have, to, but if I have to, I have to. Okay. Uh, what about Pax and Galphine? You're not tired. Do you guys want to stick around here, or? I guess you ladies. I'd rather not. Yeah, it's creepy here, and I mean, if Zug's here, hopefully, Harcourt will be okay. Zug seems fine staying here. So, I'd like to go home. Okay. Do you, do you declare that? Yes. I, I would also like to go back to my uh, place of dwelling. Uh, okay. How about Galphine? Does Galphine want to go as well? Yep. All right. Uh, so, the three, you're going to head back now? It's it's not super late, right? Not super late, but it's, it's evening. Yeah, it's good for us to get out of here now. Okay. Why are you rolling dice? She decided you're going to leave. All right, right, you guys can you can make it home successfully. Where I forget if we want a hot bath, we have to go out elsewhere, right? Our building does not. That is correct. If you want to if you want to clean up, you will have to find like a public bathhouse or a private bathhouse if you can afford one. Does the bordello take and have hot baths? Uh, it actually does. Um, yeah. There, uh, there is space in the rooms that you will that sh that uh, um, Miriam will show you, where you can clean up and use the facilities if necessary. The rooms, again, like she shows you, they're not. These are not actually visible. Um, they respond to a very specific pattern of touch, um, and when she does so, like the room opens up. Um, and she, like, tells you that most of the essentials that you need are in here. Uh, it's very important that they stay as clean as possible. Um, so normally, like, these rooms have a bit of a cleansing process that will happen and that will keep them from uh, ending up producing unwanted offspring. Yeah, I will. I'm gonna go ahead and take a bath. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. No, you're fine. I was gonna say, and probably not alone. Okay, she'll join you. She's absolutely fine with that. All right, so Galphine and uh, uh, Pax and Meg, you guys make it back home. Uh, Zug, are you heading to bed, or is, are you going to look through some of the other books that are here? Yeah, I'm going to look through the other books. Okay. You're not, Harcourt, you're not, like, keeping the, the bag with you, are you? It's just, like, laying around here? It's in my room, isn't it? Uh, is that, if that's where you put it. Where was, yeah, because we brought it back into the room because she wanted it packed up and moved back. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I should have it in the bedroom with me. Okay. So yeah, Zug, you you realize you realize like uh, shortly after you walk out that like the the bag is in Harcourt's room. Um, do you want to roam over and see if you can get at it? Do you want to just wait for the evening? Uh, I'll just uh, yell, Har "Hey Harcourt, where's those books?" They're in here. Can I grab them? 
Um, yeah, I need to talk to you about something. All right, I'll head in. Okay. Well, he'll have, she'll, Miriam will come and she'll open up the door for you to let you in. She'll put on a robe, walk, run up uh, there. Jeez. Uh, because Miriam is in the service industry and like it's in her mindset to just take care of these little things. Is Harcourt paying her? Uh, Harcourt is her employer. And she thinks Harcourt's ra- a rather charming gentleman. Mm. Um, so yeah, she'll, uh, the, the door opens and she invites you in. Um, she gestures over to the bag that you're probably looking for and then uh, Harcourt, you're still in the bath, I'm assuming, correct? Yep. All right. So yeah, she'll walk you in there where the bubbles conveniently uh, cover what is necessary. <laughs> uh, tell Sh- me you haven't used any of that paperwork yet. Uh, Yeah, I had already put that in. Yeah, you better hope they don't figure out that they're forged papers. Or we might all go to jail. What? Who, like, uh... That wasn't Alicia's signature. Okay. That was Ty's. My head is killing me. I guess, uh, should I knowledge a lot of see if there's anything I can do about this or yeah go ahead and give me a knowledge law okay so you would at least know here that the best thing to do is just deny 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 like deny you know that that wasn't her signature deny that you didn't see the person sign it at the time like you want to say yep i saw alicia sign it Um, she was conscious and willing at the time of signing, um, just deny, deny, deny any problematic circumstance. You always say the opposite of what the problematic answer could be. And that she's still dead in the other room. Well, she was alive when she signed it. Yep. (laughs) I'm just saying, we also have corpses to deal with. All right. Um, Miriam says, should I be privy to this? At the moment, I don't see a problem. Okay. Unless my lawyer has something to say about it. Nope. Okay. See you in the morning, boss. (laughs) Well, actually, uh... Can I write a contract that's a, uh, uh, where, what's it called, where she can't, yeah, non-disclosure, non-disclosure, that also includes anything said before she signed? Yeah, you immediately realize, like, oh yeah, shit, this, this is a woman who previously worked for a bunch of, uh, of demons, like, uh, this woman should probably get contracted into this real quick, so you quickly, like, Whip out a pen and whip out some, like, parchment. You'd, like, write down real quick a, uh, a contract. And you'd, like, uh, sign it with your name and then hand it over to her. And you're like, yeah, you need to sign this, like, right now. Give me a knowledge law just to make sure you did all the wording correctly. Oh, yeah, this is, like, bulletproof. You are so <laughs> proud of yourself as you <laughs> hand over this contract. I already had her name on it. <laughs> What's um, her incentive to sign it? She maintains employment. Uh, but she's fully willing to sign it. She recognizes you as the new as the potential new owners. Um, this is all all she really cares about is maintaining like her job and her job goes away if you guys don't become the owners. This this place will probably like get turned into some sort of other uh, problematic industry that she'll be no part of. So, yeah, she willingly signs on, on the, you know, the I don't want to lose my job train. All right. She's not exactly happy about having to, but she recognizes what needs to be done. Uh, Anything else, Harcourt? 
Um, give me one second. Double check. Um, well, for starters, we should not have let that guy go. We still should have killed that sucky, that incubus. Actually, no, I take that back. We should have left him all. You, letting go was actually the right thing to do. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Because if he leaves, then her problems become bigger. She's trying to get out of the caldera. She yes. seems to she seemed to believe she had a way out of the caldera. Yeah. She, yeah. Any any idea like what what that might have been or No, she just told me she could get me out of here. But she wanted us to stop that guy because otherwise he's going to cause her problems. No, wait, no, wait, uh, hang on. Yeah. No, you're right. She did not yeah, want him to leave she, because if he left, leave. yeah. Yeah. If he left, it was very dangerous for her. So, yeah. He's going to be a bigger problem later, but she's, um, yeah. She, shit's going to go bad for her shortly. That's only I can remember at the moment. Let's take a pause from this for a moment and let's see what Meg, Galphine, and Pax are doing. Did we finish eating already? Oh yeah, you guys have left already and headed back. Oh. Well, I'm getting back to my place. I want to get cozy and read. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm back at my place. I'm still thinking about rugs. Okay. Uh, you know. That it was something I wanted to get a nice rug for the place, kind of tie the room together. Mm -hmm. um, After seeing how impressive Zug's uh, room was. Exactly. I'm thinking about interior design. Uh, something that speaks to the modern gnomish woman. <laughs> Classy but feminine. So, uh, but uh, really, I'm just kind of uh, trying to sleep, you know, and, and I'm thinking about that uh, incubus guy. Okay. You know, how you made Probably a deal yeah. with a with a evil with a not only evil but a chaotic interested creature uh, that now has full interest in uh, uh, in you know continuing the reign of chaos. Yeah, thinking about that. Yeah, not like regret of like uh, what the fuck do we do now, kind of thing. You know, like now this is the next problem on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And we're just moving from problem to problem, but we're not really making any headway as of yet. Okay. Uh, and how about Galphine? How's Galphine doing? What's she doing? Um, probably running down a list of some things she wants to work on getting. Something's pretty late. And okay. The things she should get it right now. What's uh What's uh some of the things that she's like copying down? Uh, she wants to look into, like, um, getting maybe a better scythe, seeing if she could find one, um, maybe a few more drawing supplies, maybe a desk to draw at. Okay. Alright. Um, so everybody will kind of rest up in their own, their own little way, uh, for the evening. Um eventually. And Pax, we still have a little issue to deal with in your room. Uh, so you're, like, trying to relax and enjoy your evening, and uh, some starts to kind of poke at your brain again. Um, you start feeling a little bit frustrated and upset at how stressful things have been and how just people just don't seem to want to get things done. Um... Get what done? They're just constantly like 
delaying and delaying and you just want to, you got to get things done. Things are just waiting on getting done. You need to finish things. Things aren't being finished correctly. Things aren't, things aren't, Pax isn't giving me a will save yet, but needs to. Oh, am I supposed to know that? Because I told you. Now. Well, yeah, you said. Hold on. Oh, I have to mm -hmm. open up my thingy. You're making me anxious just with the way you're talking. I know. That's mean. It's a Sunday. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Pax, you will storm out of your room uh, in anger. Um, and you will wander down to one of the two people you know is here. Uh, so you start pounding on Galphine's door. Uh, Galphine, like, you're putting together your list, and all of a sudden there's just this pounding on your door. I'm, uh, gonna walk over, and I'm going to rip open the door and ask who the heck is there. Uh, you see Pax standing at the floor, at the, at the door in front of you, um, and she has, like, this very angry look upon her face. Um, she starts, like, screaming at you, why are we getting things done? This is such a problem. You never, ever deal with problems. You know, back when I was younger, we had problems, we had problems, we resolved those problems. Why don't you want to fix the problems uh and pax why don't you give me a melee attack roll what the fuck i don't even know how to do that uh underneath your saves there's base attack bonus and then melee why am i attacking this is very rude gm <laughs> X is about to roll three twenties in a row. All right, and this is versus uh, Galphine's touch AC. So what is Galphine's touch AC? A solid nine. All right. So Pax just slaps you across the face. There's no damage that you take. She just like jumps up and like Can slaps she... you across the face. I <laughs> think she reach. She jumps up like three feet in the air. She's got a good vertical leap. I can jump like a rock off her penguin. Actually, what's, what's very interesting here is you have never seen, like, Pax jump like this before. You wouldn't have thought Pax would have had this in her. And she just keeps, like, yelling at you about how you're not getting stuff done. And, like, how it's important for this business that you get your job done. Uh, I think you need to calm down. She does not calm down. When you say that, it just seems to infuriate her more. Pax, give me a will save. Oh, never tell a person to, to calm down. Yeah. All right. Pax just keeps going on and on. This is a travesty. We will never accomplish anything in this company if you don't get your mind straight, you don't get your body right, you are being very inefficient, and it is hurting our team. You are hurting our bottom line. Do you hear me? You are destroying our bottom line. This is on you. Our team is failing because of you. There's a reason we're stuck in this slop heap. It's because of you and your negligent action. I thought we were kind of living in a what nice is, place. What is this action I'm on? I'm not taking apparently. Huh? All of them. You're just not getting your job done. When was the last time you got those documents out like you're supposed to? You didn't. We've been trying to move up in this company for forever, and you've got us stuck in this middle position. And all we want to do is get to the next level. I think you've got the wrong person. Zug is the one who deals with documents. No! God damn it! You never understand when I'm talking to you. You've got stuff that you've got to get done. Give me a give me a perception is all or a sense motive is all this is happening. Okay, that's enough to get that like you've noticed Pax isn't speaking in her normal tone or in kind of her normal voice here. Like this is Pax kind of emulating a more, like, masculine voice. 
and that she's being much more stern than you've ever heard out of Pax. And I'm telling you, these reports need to get done. We are so far behind on them. I'm going to push past her. Okay. I feel like the information you gave was more of a perception than a response to a sense motive. No, that that's kind of like discerning what's different about Pax than normal. But that doesn't tell you anything about the motive. That is the motive. Sense motive is like identifying like the characteristics and, and things that the, that the person is doing. She didn't roll high enough to know exactly why you might be doing them or to come up with like some kind of reasoning behind that. Just that something's different. I knew that if we didn't get those TSP reports TPS out. TPS reports. TPS, thank you. You knew where I was going. <laughs> TPS reports out. <clears throat> All right, so you uh, you try to push past Pax, and she just keeps yelling at you about like how you're negligent on these reports. Where are you going as you push past Pax? I'm going to walk over to Meg's door and knock on it. Okay. Maybe she can make sense of this. Okay, I, I come out of my, uh, my thoughtfulness to, uh, of trying not to creep into self-pity. Hey, Galfine, how's it going? Nobody in here is fighting off depression. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have time to unpack all of that. <laughs> okay. What's going? What's all that? You can you can yeah you can hear Pax behind her like she is. Give me a give me a sense motive here. Actually, this is something that I think uh, uh, Meg might be able to pick up on. Okay. Hold on, I got too many windows. It's okay. My own house. <laughs> Make sure it's not a stat, by the way, that you might have that's better suited for this. Pregnant. Pregnant women are small. Okay, so Meg, you start noticing, uh, you got a little bit more experience with this for obvious reasons. Pax is talking like, like when you when you had to deal with gnomes that were kind of in middle management, they always had like a chip on their shoulder about like uh -huh. reports not being done on time or like people slacking off and not doing their job. And she's just like going on, like she just fell out of some sort of like, you know, gnomish hierarchy system that she's been like trudging through. And you, you overhear her say something about like how she's not there, like you're not, a, you have you guys haven't been able to advance in the company correctly because like you're not doing the job as effectively as you need to. And like, you know, they're, they're really coming down on us hard. So uh, first thing I'm gonna say is Nomolog School of Middle Management, calm down. We can, uh, we can work on this paradigm. Uh, we just need to get our synergy right. Right now, what you're creating is a negative share space with all this behavior. I'd like, yeah. time, I'd like you to take yes, a time out and uh, come up with, you know, three reasons how we can change the dynamic around. Okay, but it's echoing. Hold on a second. Hold on. Yeah, it's echoing because I can't use my headphones. Oh, shit. Like when you plug them in now, it's not doing anything? Yeah, I just lost my USB port. Literally. Oh, lost man. My oh, fuck. And the neither of them on the front are working? Hang on. Okay. Does it say bun in the oven or bum in the oven? Because it'd be funny if it said bum in the oven. Oh, it's not echoing now. It's not echoing now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Up oh, now the echo's back. Did you still got the echo? Yeah. Won't you take me down to Funky Town? No, oh, it didn't echo for that. Damn. No, that's bizarre. Only I'm echoing. Da, 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 da. How's that? Uh, let me see. Uh, no echo. Okay. Mm. All right. So, uh, Meg, go ahead and give me a diplomacy. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna talk a bunch of corporate gobbledygook and try to like, uh, calm her down. Oh, uh, there's a slight echo again. Did it go through? I didn't hear. It did go through. Um, that does not seem to settle Pax, though. So Pax just keeps drilling at home. Pax, give me another will save. Ow. 
Tops, no. All right. Uh, now give me a melee attack roll. Wow. Really? All right, and Pax slaps Meg across the face. This is why we're not progressing. You're too busy trying to tell me about synergistic solutions when in reality, we are not getting the reports in on time. Why don't you understand the importance of timeliness? We've been over this time and time and time again. I guess your problem is you don't even understand time. Do you get what time is? Time is not relative. Time is now. Time is money. Time is where we are. Time I is feel like this is time just is like the back. reason for you to get out all the yelling that you've been wanting to do recently. Wow. So, okay. Well, let's sit down and calmly discuss the ways in which we can improve our time management. And there's always time for synergy. And I stand by that lie. Um, give me a linguistics here, actually. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right, so you start reframing the, uh, uh, you try, like, reframing her way of looking at, like, business rhetoric, um, and that'll let, uh, Pax give me another will save. Oof. It's like you've been approached, you've been, uh, you've been, uh, uh taken over by an, uh, lawful neutral spirit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then Pax, with that with that speech, falls asleep on the floor in front of you. I turn around to Galphine and go, I just hate today. <laughs> Should I just leave her here, throw a blanket on her? And... Give me a knowledge religion. Something about this feels very weird, but it feels somewhat similar. Okay. Okay. Um, so you're fairly certain that uh, that th she is mo most assuredly something is haunting her. Like whatever was talking was talking in a very gnomish, masculine voice, and it was very it was using like the kind of language. That you're used to only like gnomes that have spent a lot of time in uh, uh, in corporate bureaucracy would be using. Um, talking about report structure, talking about like how time is important for moving up the chain, uh, like time of reports being managed in the correct order and in the correct timing is important for moving up the chain. These are all like gnomish uh, gnomish hierarchy and bureaucracy things, and you've heard of this before, where some gnomes get so bent out of shape trying to move up the corporate ladder that they, like, when they pass on, they, like, can't get over the fact that they haven't accomplished where they wanted to be on that, like, hierarchy chain, that their souls kind of sit in unrest. I love this with every part of me. <laughs> okay. So, uh... You know, back at the uh, back at the corporate headquarters there, uh, Galphine, sometimes uh, gnomes who didn't achieve all that they could achieve uh, based on their personal paradigm uh, would become uh, spirits and then wander around uh, reminding everyone to be efficient and to be busy and to uh, you know, keep inculcating those ideas. And... Right. Uh, that seems to be what she has right now. I'm not sure how you get rid of that. Um, however, this is just uh, what we need right now. What's that? This is just what we re need right now. Yeah. So, uh, hope you like speeches about time management. <laughs> that's not going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Uh. <laughs> um, so you would actually know, in addition to this, uh, let me see if I can find this real quick. <laughs> You would know that if you can uh, manage at some point to either lay down a consecrate or some other kind of cleansing ritual for her room, because it seems to be like it seems to only be affecting her. There's nobody else on the floor that's being affected by it. So it is probably like linked in some way to her room. You might be able to clear loose the uh, um, the creature on the inside. All right. You might even uh, be able to like create some sort of seance or something to speak with it. Uh, if you if you have the proper spells. All right. Uh, so. Giving a knowledge religion, what spells? I cast a knowledge religion to determine what spells I would need for yeah, that. Yeah, go for it. Uh, ooh, very good. Um, so speak with dead is an obvious one that comes up. Mm -hmm. uh, different ones can sometimes be like interacted with in very specific ways. Um, something like this, you'd probably find that like getting trying to get your mind in a more even keel might open you up to these things getting a better grasp on your line of thinking. Uh, they're kind of like, a, they're kind of very attracted to calm souls. Um, okay. It's what they desire most is to find, you know, peace in the chaos of their mindset that they're trapped in. So just clear my mind, eh? Yeah, maybe if you like meditated or, you know, you tried to do some kind of uh, of thinking, maybe you could try to like embrace this and then try to push this out okay i'm gonna go into um uh, is um pax's room still open I pax's room is still open yep okay i'm going to uh, i'm going to meditate in there where is my mind all right uh you now need to mind? give me a will save where is my mind Okay, you can feel it start to creep in, um, and you have some level of control. Do you want to let it in, or do you just want to push it aside? Ooh, I'm going to go for the fun and let it in. Okay, so you feel it, and you like start to feel like that gnomish frustration, that frustration that you feel when you like go down to the, when you've gone down to the GPPF and you've refiled for like the ability to rejoin um into the into the family again um and you can feel that kind of brewing over like you've put in the time you, it doesn't matter what your time is you're wasting your time you're not doing the forms correctly you're you're like not being synergistic in all this you are not finding solutions that are effective for solving your personal paradigm and you can like start to feel this kind of come over you um as you do like you notice that like the world around you kind of starts to fade away and you are standing in a like small office room with papers across the desk in front of you. And they okay. kind of like start to pile up as a, as a whirlwind starts or as a gust of wind starts to fill the room, the papers start to like whirl up and spin together. Um, and I'm going to need you to give me an initiative roll. Oh, man. I'm being attacked by paperwork. Perhaps yep. the most gnomish thing that will happen in this game. <laughs> um, you are going to be attacking with your will save during this combat. Uh, uh, which is infinitely better than my actual uh, actual attack. Hooray. Uh, so let's see if this goes before you. It looks like it probably will. Yep. So it will go first. Um, and it is going to attempt to attack you. Um, so when it attacks you, it is going to be uh, versus 10 plus your will save. Okay, it's so a 17. Okay. I love that Dwight Schrute. 
Uh, so then an 11 will not hit you. So you can, uh, like, you hear as it, uh, as it, like, whirlwinds forward, it, like, shoots a stream of just paperwork at you. Um, and you, like, move out of the way as you can see, like, a bunch of, uh, uh, reapplication forms, like, hit the wall behind you. Ugh. You are a failure. You do not understand how to properly and effectively use your time. You can hear the walls echo around you. Your action. I'm going to counter back with, um, I'm going to counter back with, uh, trying to think of a corporate kind of way to, uh, I'll just attack with my big old, uh, what did I get? Hold uh, on. you got a 20. All right. What's the damage? Uh, you will roll a D4. Which is more than my actual weapon. <laughs> All right. Ah, ah. So you, you like fire back a stream of like, my productivity has been above board. I have managed, and you start listing off like your list of successes. Um, and as you yeah. do, like you can, you watch as like bits of paper, your words like stream from your mouth and, and like start signing off on bits of papers that, that swirl through the, uh, the whirlwind. Um, and it replies. Um, you are nothing but inefficiency made gnome. If you understood just for a moment what it actually meant to be efficient, you'd realize you are underproducing. You are underachieving. You are under my ability. All right, I'm gonna. What did they get on their? Uh, uh they missed entirely. As another stream of like papers comes blowing at you. Hmm. I'm looking at our numbers now. I seem to be doing slightly better than yourself. Perhaps if you'd have done a proper audit, you'd have seen the, uh, the, the holes in your paradigm. Are you mitigating the loss with this strategy? It throws back at you. Auditing is oh, wow. horribly yeah. inefficient. You yourself should not be doing your own personal auditing. You should be using effective time management solutions and the personnel you have at your disposal to perform effective audits. Um, and as you hear the phrase effective audits, um, you take 10 points of damage in your mind what? is like a swarm of like papers start slicing across your, uh, uh, your face and chest. Ouch. Ouch. You have just been schooled in inefficient auditing. Well, whatever. <laughs> Man, jeez. Yeah. I'm going to have to attack back. Hmm. There's no other thing I can do to try to calm this spirit other than engage in this combat? No, not at this point. Okay. All right. Character death by paper cut. Very good. Uh, that will hit. Uh, give me something. Give me what you say here. Uh, as what you say can actually affect us greater if you say something that I like. Okay, so it says that I am an inef inefficiency writ gnome? Yeah, it, yeah, it says that, uh, utilizing, doing personal audits is an inefficiency. Um, and you should be better utilizing the, uh, uh, the people you have at your disposal. I would be, but I'm too busy being slapped around by you. This is not particularly effective. Uh, Gnomish paperwork says berating associates does, it, it has never proven to be efficient. Your your fundamental thesis of yelling at me is not solid. Oh, uh, go ahead and give me the D4 plus your wisdom, uh, or plus your will save. How do I do the... I've never actually done it the last time. Uh, just roll so, slash... Ju just do slash R, uh, D, uh, D4 plus, uh, what is it, 7 is your will save? 
Yeah. Yeah. And then it's R slash... Slash R space D20 plus 7. Am I... No, D4. D4. Yeah, D4. Sorry. That's all right. I would like the 20, but I want to come about <laughs> my victory. Oh, close. Thanks other slash. Time. It's the other slash. Uh, okay. Almost correct, though. And it's D4 plus 7. It did the it did the equals instead. Oh shit! It's all right. I, I gotta like put the keyboard in front of me so I can see it now. Okay. It's actually not the song that I meant to anyway. That's why. What did I do wrong? Uh, in this case, I don't know because it didn't even show up. D four slash R D four plus seven. Oh, I know. There's no R there. Okay. There. Oh wow! All right. So yeah, you uh, you hurl your words back, and it's like oh, my paradigm is ineffective. You can see like the papers start to start to coalesce together, and like start to like wrap against the form of a uh, of a like what looks like an older gnomish man like the papers kind of wrap tightly and like create almost a paper mache of gnome in front of you my my efficiencies are flawed my my desires my goals are ineffective inefficient pointless I should be Perhaps. focusing on my own personal growth and achievement. Perhaps if I worked better on myself, I could be more effective to the company. I, I think so. Maybe take a day or two to, you know, consider and come up with an action plan, you know, that involves some solid bullet points with short term goals. You know, that way you have the long term built achievement. I want to be nice to the spirit. I know it's just an omen with seven. I actually feel sorry for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, what needs to be done now? Uh, nothing. Kind of you have, you have, a, like, you can feel the spirit kind of fade away as your vision returns to, uh, you standing in Pax's room. Uh, you have defeated the spirit that haunts Pax's room. Nice. One for, one for Max. All right, Pax, uh, I come back into uh, my room. Mm -hmm. Pax is still Gelfine laying on the floor, by the way. Uh, Gelfine, oh, I don't oh. know if you've done anything about Pax laying oh. on the floor. Well, he's doing that, I'll pick her up and I'll, like, put her back on her bed. Okay. Go ahead, Meg. All right, so I I come to to find Gelfine tucking in uh, Pax. Mm -hmm. I say you're a, you're, you're a good friend, Gelfine. Uh, um... Uh, I'm just gonna go pass out in my room right now. I should be pretty wiped off from that, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, that was that was pretty energy draining to like spend your evening when you were already tired dealing with uh, somebody else's emotional issues. Oh man. <laughs> Wait, don't they call that a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> Ta <-da. laughs> Oh no. Uh, all right. <laughs> So you guys can make it through the rest of the night. Uh, so I didn't wake up throughout any of that? No. You were out cold for the rest of the evening. Uh, Galphine, you eventually fall asleep uh, working on your list uh, and probably a few other things. All right, so... Fall asleep with the notebook on my face. Yep. The next morning... Uh, what does everybody want to do? I feel like starting the day off with some oatmeal, you know, kind of get myself on a, uh, you know, to-do kick. Okay. Yeah. You, know, you know, I, you know, I'm thinking about gnomish productivity. You know, that is one of the things we value as a community. So, uh, you know, I try a little bit of that, but not be as serious as that guy. Gee whiz, that guy. Oh, actually, I almost forgot about something. So, Zug, you were going through the rest of those books. Uh, was there anything yeah. that Harcourt and Zug wanted? Anything more in terms of conversation that Zug and Harcourt wanted to exchange? Not unless Zug had anything to say. Okay. 
So Zug, no, I didn't have anything. one of these books is an introduction to converting to, um, and it's kind of like an introductory book on how to become the creature that uh, you lust to be. Um, are you going to? Like a... Are you going to start reading? You're going to start reading through this book, or are you just going to skim it? Uh, I'll just skim it. Okay. Um, give me a will save as you skim the book. Steve, is this like a help book, help stuff, help book for demons? Uh, this is more like a. I mean, it's it's sort of self helpy. <laughs> Um, so you read through the book, or you skim through the book real quick, you get a basic synopsis of this. You do feel compelled to want to read this, it seems really interesting. Um, oh, but the book is basically like a, like, an assistive guide to how to go from being human to being a demon. Uh, and then it has like a reference guide to help teach you abyssal. Um, some tips on, like, things that you can do in order to, like, uh, help achieve, like, the idea is that the demon's kind of inside of you and you just kind of have to let it, like, reach into you and or reach out of you and, like, take control over your outside. You know, it's kind of like a reformation from the inside out um, is how you reach full demonhood. Um, and the book is a really engaging, like, thing to glance through. Um, you think it might be worth a might be worth a full read? Well, I do want to know abyssal. It will teach you abyssal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, uh, I filled my will, so I pretty much have to read it, right? Yeah, you'll start reading it. Um, it is twelve chapters long. Uh, throughout the process. Uh, you will get a will save after each chapter to stop reading the book. Um, if you succeed at reading six chapters, your alignment will move to neutral evil. If you succeed at reading 12 chapters, your alignment will move to chaotic evil as part it's of the conversion a process. Step program. It is a 12 step program. <laughs> um. So yeah, you you can pro you can manage to read through the first chapter in the morning. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give me if with three successful will saves? By the way, uh, you stop reading the book, and you can choose right. not to read the book again. Um, at three failed will saves, you will learn abyssal. All right. So I, I should roll roll another one. Right yeah, now? if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna start reading it now, you'll be able to get at least through some of this uh, in the morning. Like a couple hours of reading will get you through chapter one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll. It's a lot to take in, so you're gonna have to take yeah. it one chapter per day. Okay. Uh, so you have failed one. <laughs> Almost got my abyssal. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is Harcourt doing in the morning when he gets up? Um, Harcourt is going to attend to the corpses that are laying in the main room. Okay. It's been like three days, <laughs> and they're probably starting to stay. It's been two days, but yeah, they, they're starting to, they're starting to get a little bit, uh, smelly. Yeah, if there's any near my room, I'm prestidigitating. Oh, no, they're, the they're a good ways away from your room. They, okay. they, they're much further, they're like down here, uh, and your room is way up here, so. I'm gonna see if I can find someplace within the building that maybe they disposed of bodies? Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a perception. Uh, here's where I'm a Viking. <laughs> yep, I'm a Viking. <laughs> yeah, no clue. There's a lot of machinery downstairs, so you assume it would have to be somewhere down there, but you don't understand how most of this machinery down here works. Yeah, I just, I'm gonna keep looking. Alright, what are Pax and Galfine doing in the meantime? I want to sleep in. I felt like I didn't sleep very well. Honestly. Okay. So Pax sleeps a little late. How about Galphine? I'm going to go down and get some food. All right. Well, Meg is going to be down there as well when you come down for some food. Excuse me. Those are the roller disco devils, and they are as awesome in the 70s as anything Marvel produced at the time. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you guys in this Discord. 
Oh yeah, there is. I mean, there is several pages. I'm sure. It's very strange. Most of it, you had to be there during yeah, the moment. Clearly. Oh my god. Okay. So um, you know, I'm enjoying some oatmeal with some fruit. You know, I see Galphine come down. I way over. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Great job last night. Great job last night. I feel like we hit all our marks. Our productivity is up. I, for one, feel rejuvenated. Do I even know what happened? Uh -uh. Okay. So, do we uh, have to tell uh, Pax what happened, or? I mean, if she asks. All right, then we'll only tell her if she asks. Sound good? Sure. All right. Oatmeal? It's the breakfast of Nomians. <laughs> I think I'm going to need a bit more than just oatmeal. All right, so what's Galphine having for breakfast? Something with meat. All right. Uh, so they will bring you some steak and eggs. Well, steak and eggs. I don't think you understand. You may think I want, what is it, a lot of eggs? <laughs> bring me... All, all eggs. the eggs, yeah. All the eggs, yeah. Um, all right, so the two of you can have breakfast. Galphine, is there anything you want to discuss with Meg over breakfast? Or vice versa? Not particularly. Okay. So what kind of drawings are you working on? Um, you know, not much. I spent a lot of the last night making the list rather than a drawing. I see, I see. I had not thought out what I would actually have in conversation. Huh. No problem. Um, well, let's let's come back to you for a second. So let's get okay. another check from Harcourt to see how Harcourt does with the bodies. Oh, goody. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. It's vaguely better. <laughs> You're, like, dead sure, like, there's got to be something you can do with these bodies. Like, you're opening up stuff. You're thinking, like, if I put a fire in here, maybe I could, like, burn them after, like, ah, oh, no, that's going to take hours. You're, like, opening stuff up. You're moving stuff around. Like, just not able to find anything. I mean, you've been down here for hours. Uh, Zug, you finish up that chapter of the book, and it's a, it's a bit of a, a tough read. Um, it has talked to you about, like, some of how, like, the organization of society is just, like, unruly, and eventually, like, you know, the rules become too much, and people lose their abilities to do the things that they really want. And even though these rules can protect you during negative circumstances, the rules really just keep you from being able to really engage in the freedoms that you deserve to do what you really desire to do. And so part of that kind of starts to speak to you just a little bit. Um, you know, you like the way that law keeps you safe from the problems that you might have, but you are kind of limited by, like, you, you kind of feel like that, yeah, like, the law is really kind of telling me, you know, the wrong things, you know, not all the laws make sense, and, you know, some of this should just kind of, like, go fuck itself. Um, but you're, and you, like, your mind is kind of processing that for a while, um, and, uh, you'll... Give me a perception while you're uh, sitting up here, kind of thinking over this. All right. I feel like your next words, if they aren't fuck the man, you're really not. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! So, like, you hear, like, banging coming from the basement. All right, well, uh, me and my scorching rays are going <laughs> to go check that out. All right, so you, uh, you, ru you like, head on downstairs, and, like... Harcourt is down there, like, investigating, slamming on things, like, trying to figure out how things work down here with this, uh, this giant machine. What's going on, Harcourt? We need to get rid of those bodies, and I figure they gotta have a place to get rid of the bodies in this place. True. Uh, I'll help look. Alright, go ahead and give me, the two of you give me a perception. Yay, more Viking skills. Very nice. Ooh. Okay, so with that, the two of you will realize that, I mean, they have 
humanoid meat that's here, right? So they have to have some way that they got they got this meat in the first place. And then you find it. You find a machine that is designed to grind away human meat. Humanoid meat. Okay. So um, we're going to bring those two bodies down here and uh, drop them in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you drop them in. Um, it needs a little bit of arcane power. Um, so, Zug, um, give me a knowledge arcana. You realize that you can just kind of like stand here and, and funnel in uh, some zeroth level spells to get this thing to uh, to run. Um, and sure enough, you've got yourself like a nice big batch of ground up uh, human remains. Mm. Mm. What do we do with them? Oh, uh, well, we fertilize the flowers out front. There are no flowers out front. This is this is blade territory. There's not a plant in sight. I mean, I, mean, I could suggest you the, the chaotic evil thing to do with them. There's lots of hungry people in the uh, refugee camp. And we're gonna do something with this. I mean, now they're not identifiable, but they're gonna be stinking up the joint. Yep. Just Speaking packing. of camps, the werewolf camp would probably want them. Yeah, this is true, but you know what? <laughs> was, was, technically, wasn't this evil meat? So. Uh yeah, I mean, I guess we can just dig a hole and toss it in or something. Dig a hole, dig a hole. There's not really any like land land, so you'd have to find some place where you could where you could manage to dig a hole. Yeah, we gotta find some way to get rid like, of it. Like every square foot of the property is is like building on this property. Okay, well uh is there like plumbing in here? Can we just like flush it down a toilet or something? Meat doesn't flush well down a toilet. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> sure how, how grounded was it's it's still like, like in uh, it's like ground, in ground, like beef. ground beef. Yeah, it's like in ground beef quality. So if you flush this down the toilet, it's gonna clog up things really bad. We're gonna have to call the plumber and there'll be Let's find some dogs, maybe. <laughs> we can feed it to dogs, right? Yeah, make make like a pig farm or something. It's either that or you know what we pack it up and just put it in the freezer with the rest of it. So when we get rid of that, we can get rid of this at the same time since or how are we going to explain that? We are taking a hold of this building and we have a lot of flesh. I don't know. So can we're I get can rid I, of all of it? Can I just turn it to ash with burning hands? Uh, you can cook it off if you want. I mean, you can eventually burn it all down. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can do with a, with burning hands. Okay. Well, you guys can you guys can take and, and produce a fire. There's there's actually a point in the in the place where you can like set a fire going and you can uh, start burning the meat. Uh, like seal it off. One of these things is like a cooker. Um, so you guys like set it up and uh, can <laughs> eventually uh, ashify the meat. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go mop up the blood. <laughs> I think unless the conversation is what you guys are having for dinner next, you're really missing an opportunity. <laughs> All right, um, Zug, um, mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, how do you feel about cannibalism? When it's when it's humans, not goblins, that is. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of human meat. Okay. Uh, I'm much, I lean much more towards the uh, the kitten jerky. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, so th this doesn't sound out very good for you. I was just curious because I know Zug has a very like open palate, so didn't know if maybe he'd uh, if he liked himself. I've tried some... it. Yeah, I've tried it, yeah. but uh, wasn't a fan. Okay. All right. Uh, so Galphine and Meg, uh, what is the conversation between the two of you? So yeah, his pack uh, starts larping. You know, I what? think uh, your your character's asleep, so you're going to sleep. You're larping. I'm not alive. No, <laughs> I'm laying in a more comfortable position. It's also getting hot in here. I'm sorry. So yeah, uh, so what are you gonna do today? 
If there wasn't any... If uh, no one else had any plans or anything they wanted to get done, I figured I'd see about tackling some of the stuff on my list. Uh, uh. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be a lot of chance to get a lot of things done because we constantly have uh, things occur. Um, you know, the gods laugh while uh, beings make plans, right? Hmm. A good gnomish saying. Good gnomish saying. Uh, yeah, I eat some oatmeal thoughtfully. Yeah, stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so Galphine, you like stuff? <laughs> All right. So this conversation just kind of drags on for a bit until breakfast is over. <laughs> Uh, It'll drag on as long as Galphine entertains it. Yeah. Galphine, uh, what do you want to do after breakfast? Um, I think the first, I think I'd like to, uh, I'll send, uh, hmm. Is there a way I could do... Is there a group bottle message option? Uh, there is technically a group bottle message option. I'll, I'll do that and see if anyone had anything in particular like we're set to do today. Okay, so all of you get a message asking if, uh, if there's any plans for the day. Yeah, you can come help clean up bodies and blood. <laughs> Does that get sent to everybody? It gets sent to everybody. That's Sounds my like response. I reply to everybody, too. Yeah. Reply. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, boy. We're going to clean up bodies and blood. Yeah, I can start cleaning up the blood with some prestidigitation. Mm-hmm. Isn't that temporary? No. Uh, no, it just goes slowly. Uh, yeah. It's one one foot around or something. Yeah, one, like one cubic foot. foot per round. Yeah. It takes some time. I'll pitch in with the cleanup. Okay. Galphine, what do you want to do? Do you want to bother with the cleanup, or do you got other things to do? Clean up, it's clean up. Everybody, everywhere, it's clean You're not up. Barney. Everybody do your share. Yeah, that's right. I think it's a lesson we all could learn. I might stop at a place. Okay. Where do you want? <laughs> On the way there. Where do you want to stop? Um. At the desk store. <laughs> <laughs> do I know where I could find a good place to get a desk? You're not sure. You know that Zug would definitely know. You can give me knowledge local and see if you know of a good place. I think they have that chain. Desk oh yeah, RS. you absolutely know. Uh, if you want a really finely crafted one, one that like looks super natural, <coughs> uh, you could probably have the uh, the dryads like manufacture one for you. Um, you know that uh, Resix uh, is often like known for uh, a bunch of people who are fantastic woodworkers. If you want a more like modern and stylized one um, that has a little bit of uh, traditionalist flair. Um, or if you want something that looks like fantastical, whimsical, and like filled with creativity, uh, the GPPF uh, has some of the most uh, creative pieces of like artsy desk that you could ever find. You should go for. Or those. you might be able to find a used one in uh, in the unaligned territory if you're lucky. Other than and the used, used, they mean one. falling Do off I the back of the truck. If you want cheaper, then it would. Then you'd probably want to look around for a used one. Well, I mean, out of the other three options. Uh, out of the other three options, the more traditional option, getting it from the uh, from Resix, would probably be the cheapest. Um, the Dryads don't typically tend to sell the desks that they make, except to people that like. You know, from your knowledge locally, you know this that kind of like do favors for them and kind of earn the ability to have that produced. 
So if you're willing to put in some time and effort potentially for the Dryads, you might be able to get them to make you a nice desk, but they'd still also charge you. Uh, but Resix would Resix would just like make you build you whatever you want. Then I'll go talk to people in Resix. Okay. Uh, so you can head on over there. Uh, Meg, are you heading straight over to clean up? Yeah, I'll head over to straight to clean up, but I'll stop and grab some pastries again. Okay. For my compatriots, I've already had delicious oatmeal. No problem. Compatriots. Uh, what did I say? No, she's saying compatriots. You said com- you said uh, companions and pastries. She's being so. Oh my god, compatriots! That's excellent. I love that. We gotta we gotta use that now. It's I'll one of my compatriots. All right, Whitney, where are you heading? Or I'm sorry, you're waking. Uh, I'm a, by now. You're probably waking up. So I don't have any recollection of what happened. Not at all. I'm gonna go down and get some food. Okay. You can have yourself breakfast. What are you having this morning? Um, having grits with pimiento cheese. Uh, uh soft. Um, wait. Uh, poached egg. Um, some avocado and a hot sauce. Okay. And what are your plans for the rest of the day? You notice there's a bottle message from Galphine asking what everybody's doing, and then uh, Harcourt saying back, uh, "Clean up, come on, come on down and clean up some blood." There's a reply from Mag. Uh, I'll bring the ba- <laughs> I'll bring the pastries. If only there was a clever pun I could think of for that. Um, I don't know. I'm not feeling great today, so I think I might go back and. Rest after I eat. Okay. All right, Meg, you will make it back to the uh, uh, to the winery unmolested. <laughs> Thank goodness. That's a weird word. I, I mean, it could have happened. He could have been. She could have been bothered while she's roaming through blade territory. Yeah, people don't usually say molested. I've heard, heard that you bothering. were used constantly. It's not like uh, a word I fail to hear. So, who are these people you? Talk I've heard to? the word unmolested get used any time they're talking about like somebody going from place to place being unbothered. That's weird. You're weird. So, mm-hmm. uh, I know. Uh, it's true. Hey, I'm here for the cleanup. I brought pastries. Is it unmolested? Then you can come <laughs> in. I'm a little confused. I'm like, why would I? Bother pastries like that. I don't know. I just didn't urge to say that. Oh my god. Wait, if we have pastries together, we could be compatriots. Yeah, huh? You thought about that for a while. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It was a long walk. Long walk. Carrying a bag of pastries that a box of pastries that I turned out didn't want to eat. All right. Let's clean this joint up. Do some consecrating. All that kind of stuff. Alright, so you guys get to work cleaning up. Uh, it'll take a couple hours, but you can get this place nice and clean, especially with Zug using that uh, cantrip clean on things. Okay. Um, are you guys going to clean up the whole place or just the blood? Well, probably... I'm... We should eventually take care of everything if we're going to take uh, possession of the building. We'll put a good five or six hours, and then whatever we don't finish today, we'll save for a next uh, Excellent. Uh, day. So uh, you guys can can put in a heavy uh, a heavy amount of cleaning, and uh, periodically there'll be some people that knock at the door, uh, just customers looking for uh, for what's going on and trying to figure out what's uh, what the deal is. When they uh, when they come to the door, I'm like uh, spring cleaning. Check back in about two days. Okay. They're not familiar with probably, what you... We could probably put a sign up on the door saying... Oh, nice. Like, reopen in a week or something okay. like that. Uh, so, yeah. So, I was going to have Miriam could take some... Uh, Miriam could, t- could uh, start setting up some appointments. I mean, she's actually... If you want to talk to her, she's willing to work if you want to, like, pick and choose people for her. Uh, she has no problem with that right now. So are we now running the brothel? You're not necessarily running the brothel. Like, Miriam is willing to do some work if you want her to do some work. 
but it's it's not going to be on the books when she does it. Because keep in mind, you can't legally operate here yet. Yeah, do, do I know, like, about how long? Uh, it's gonna be, it's still a few days from now, so. Uh, could be, like, I think we, we talked about it being so, anywhere yeah, from 5 to 10 days. A, Seven to door. 10. Yeah, um, so, so yeah, like, open in two weeks or something. Or okay. Probably, well, no, it'd be a week. Ten days, ten days is one week. Uh, uh, okay. Well, because we, we would... Let's see. We would need enough stuff to get this place running and self-sufficient while we're adventuring. So probably two weeks. Okay. Because we would we would need to hire some more staff. Okay. And uh, probably buy like supplies. Got it. So maybe we want to set up like some interviews and we can interview for that accountant while we're doing that. No stuff. problem. Can't we just, we probably can't we need just have the, the place girls too. that were here come back? I mean, we could, uh, we could ask. I'm pretty sure they'd like to stay employed. Um, Miriam does tell you she could probably get a hold of at least most, uh, a few of them. Yeah, if, the, if they're good ones, like, uh, you know, if there was anybody who was like a shitty worker or something. She's, she'll she'll agree to, to, like, skip over the ones that uh, probably wouldn't be a great benefit. Also, ones that are, you know, not evil. Um, <laughs> That'll be harder. All right, so, Galphine, you are picking up a desk. Um, you just want something, like, average quality? Yeah. Um, Literally picking up a desk. You can probably manage to pick up, like, an average quality desk for around 10 gold. I mean, it's going to be, like, you know, uh, Ikea-level desk. But it'll get the job done. She's a big done. fan of the Sultan product line. <laughs> uh, and you can actually probably manage to carry it yourself. Um, they uh, they managed to have, like, a couple of uh, a couple of ones they, they prefab together. And you can just, like, you know, boop -a -doo, carry it around uh, with your strength. It'll take you a while to get back, but you'll get it back home um, and get it put in. Uh, I will move a desk asset to your apartment shortly. Okay. Anything else you want to do this evening or this afternoon? That's taking you probably about the, the same amount of time it would have taken them to clean up the uh, brothel. Yeah, good desk purchasing. If it was Ryan, it would take two sessions. <laughs> uh, oh. Your desk, by the way, will give you a plus one circumstance bonus uh, when you are doing your drawings. So if you're in your, if you're there and you're doing your your drawings or sketchings, you get to roll with an additional plus one. I need to remember to give everybody uh, room inventory sheets. Okay. Yeah, I just got all my stuff in my regular inventory. Yeah, I realize eventually that might crowd up anybody who's buying stuff for their home. Yeah, I got a ton of stuff listed there already. Yep. Well, since I've moved into this big bedroom here, I don't think I have a problem. <laughs> I was already furnished and I'm good to go. Uh, so what does Galfi want to do after getting the desk back? And it's just a desk, no chair. Uh, you could have bought a chair for the for, for uh, another two gold. Okay. I'll buy a chair. Sure. What uh, else? I think I'll glance over my list. Realize there's um, there's not really anything else I'd like to complete today. In. Okay. See if the end head over to where everyone else is and see if. <laughs> All right. Once you uh, once you finish your cleaning, you can show up and the uh, the party is there, um, and they are uh, cleaning up the. Uh, they have finished cleaning up the brothel. Um, and yeah, uh, we can. I want to skip ahead real quick to hiring this accountant. 
Um, so I don't know if, if Pax ever wants to come by or if Pax even cares about the accountant. Yeah. Pax is chilling. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Let's go through... Let's see if I can find where I put them. Let's go through our little interview process. So there are three people uh, that respond to your application. Uh, Aesti Stonefist, uh, Petrus Narenhawk, and Sofiha Ruxpin. Am, am I, this is out of character, am I missing something that the Ruxpins have sort of like a East Asian field? As far uh, as their... there, there is to some degree, yes. Okay. That is the correct nomenclature, correct? East Asian? Uh, I would, well, more Eastern European. Oh, okay. Like, you know, think Ukrainian, Russian, I guess Russian is technically Asian, but, uh, is, is the Ukraine technically Europe or is that actually Western Asia? It is Europe. Okay. Well, depending on which side of it. Yeah, I, I feel like it's like a, I'm not great at maps. So. Okay, uh, well. So is there anyone in particular that you'd like to meet with first? Um, I'll give you kind of a, I guess I should give you a rundown on each of them. Oh, let me bring them up here. Uh, so, um, uh, ISD is a, uh, when she files her, um, application, she claims that she is a very, very well-renowned accountant, that she does a lot of accounting work for some very large firms in, uh, in the Stonefist family. Um, that she's been working for quite a long time and has a very um, good ability to have great attention to detail. Um, she is also particularly proficient at uh, knowing like fine uh, arcane items and uh, knowing how to like make sure they are of, uh, uh, of, of value when the time comes. Uh, for need. Um, whoops. Uh, Pi uh, Petrus. Um, just Fairfax. Did you say Fairfax? Never mind, sorry. Okay. I'm reading something else. Um, Petrus, Petrus, uh, also claims that he is, Petrus is a dwarf. Uh, ISC is a gnome uh, from House Stonefist. Um, Petra says that he is well versed in understanding the complicated and complex text codes uh, and re uh, regulations of Ari or of Akunsa. Um, he is also very familiar with property and how to manage uh, not only the property, but upkeep of property. Um, he does have some good experience in understanding uh, magical items and the value that they have, um, and also uh, is skilled in knowing how to unload some of these items when they might otherwise be difficult to get rid of. <laughs> Which type of items? Uh, just items in general. To pit oh, okay. Typically, though, items that are difficult to uh, that are often difficult to unload. Uh, and lastly, there is Sophia. Um, Sophia's application is a bit different than everyone else's. Um, is it a photo spread? Please tell me it's a photo spread. <laughs> no, it is not. Um, I forget how this. So, uh, pull that tree. 
Um, Sophia's application um, lists that she is uh, has also got a lot of experience in the field of accounting. Um, that she is particularly good at. Um, she also has some skill in understanding, or some some good skill in understanding the complex uh, the complexities of the um, the tax systems and the tax codes, um, as well as a few other systems. She's well versed in the uh, past of the town, uh, as well as the uh, the past of a few other places. Um, she is. Um, she is also well well versed at discussing uh, that good negotiation tactics should audits or other like complicated social situations arise that need the proper tongue to smooth over the situation. Um, so, are there any of these that you want to meet with more so? Any of these that you don't really care to meet with? I mean, number two sounds ideal because of the help with running our business, in my opinion. Okay. So that's the one I'm most interested in. Thoughts for I anybody like, else? Uh, okay, so number two is the gnome. And number number, three number is two is the dwarf. Number one is the gnome. And number three is a human. Hmm. I, I won't say that I have a gnome bias. But I do. Uh, hold on, I jostled my camera. Am I back on? Nope. No. You'll probably have to try to uh, just hit the camera button. There's like a little camera on off button. Okay. And if you click it and then click it again, maybe it'll come back up. Okay. But uh, I do like uh, number two. I do think the dwarf would be particularly good. Okay. Anybody these else? Want... Be... Go ahead. Will these individuals be joining us in any form of combat? They will, will they not. Strictly be office workers. They are strictly office workers. Yeah. As they as they um, take their cut, they will gain XP based on the cut that they based on uh, the money they earn. Huh. Is there a way we can make them arm wrestle? <laughs> I don't think they're really arm wrestle for it. All right, so it sounds like, though, does anybody disagree with number two? No. no. Okay. Uh, so the four of you I, can... I, I like number three because I feel like number three could help us hide bodies. What? What would lead you... Can... To believe she that. knows so much about the town. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sick of grinding bodies into dog food and looking for animals to feed them to. Okay. So do you guys just want to meet with all three then? Yeah, let's meet with all three. Okay. Sure. Uh, so we'll start with right. uh, Asti. Um, she okay. will come by. And uh, you guys can probably just, you know, talk with her here at the uh, uh, at the winery. Okay. Um. Hi. Uh, she's she's got like a stack of papers with her uh, as she comes in. She kind of like lays them down on the table, and she will like hand each of you her resume. All right. What uh, font is it in? Um. It is in. Comic Sans, please say Comic Sans. No, it They're is in. She has like a way. very, she has a very fine personal handwriting that she has done for each uh, for each of these. Um, and she has like different certain areas are uh, are transcribed in uh, common uh, gnomish and elven. Wow, fancy, fancy. Detail is important, and if you're not detail driven then you are probably not well-driven. Sorry, I hope that wasn't too forward. I've been well no, driven. you know, sure. We've de definitely been well-driven. Um, so who is handling these, uh, um, these conversations, this, like, process? 
One of you will I kind of have to take the front. Uh, it, it, can, it can be. It'll be sense motives. Uh, so up to two people can participate in the process. I will just sit back and watch because I'm a Viking in those locations. I'll I'd like to participate because okay. I have sense motive. Delphine, do you have sense motive? Um, no. Okay. All right. I believe I am the sense motive machine in this yep. party. Yep, so go ahead and give me a sense motive here. I'm going to run this like I did in the Conscripta game when they were looking for a driver. Sense motive is kind of how you run somebody through a uh, through a hiring process because you're like asking them directed questions and kind of getting the answers you're looking for based on what they say. All right, now I'll just I'll attempt to be the sister, I guess. Sure, that's fine. Are we rolling right now? Or? Yeah, go ahead and roll it now. Both of you should give me a sense motive. Uh, Meg? Do we lose you, Charles? Are you still there? Apparently Meg died. Charles? Uh-oh. That's some timing. <laughs> All right. Um... Well, just give me a plus 20 on all my rolls and assume that that's what Meg rolled. No, I'll roll for Meg for now. It's a little, little scrap for time. Okay. Eh, no. No, that was the opposite. It's the opposite of happy. Yep. All right, so Meg does... Oh, there she is. You back? There we go. Even better. We'll take the we'll take Meg's actual roll. Okay. So. Oh, you got hit. Yep. There you go. You hit the okay. share screen button by mistake. Uh. So yeah. Um. You will get the idea that uh, Meg is very very proficient as an accountant. Um. She has some skill in understanding magic. Some skill in understanding the laws. Uh, knowing like who powerful and influential people are, uh, she has some measure of under of comprehension of good comprehension of language, um, and she is adept at uh, knowing having a good eye for detail. Uh, she's good at like seeing like details and paperwork that she she's working on that might be missing something, and good at seeing the value in things. Huh. Very good. Uh, so that is Asti. Uh, yeah. then we will go on to Petrus. Petrus. Uh, he will come in, and as he comes in, he'll kind of, like, set down, like, a... He's got, like, this, uh, this, uh, ink pen that is, like, shaped like a, like a dwarven, uh, smith hammer. Um, and he'll, like, hand each of you his resume, uh, and he'll, like, set down the, uh, the pen. All right, so, uh... You guys need numbers taken care of, huh? Yep. I'm your man. You don't need to look any further. I got numbers for days. You have all the best numbers? I know all the best numbers. Okay. Uh... Does he have our number, though, is my question. <laughs> he's hoping he's got it. No, he insists he does have it. He's got it. I have your number. You've done work for adventuring groups before? I have. Hmm. What were some of the challenges you faced when working for adventuring groups? And what policies or plans did you put in place to effectively deal with them? You people get weird shit all the time. Shit that you can't unload. You ever wanted to get rid of, like, some kind of weird piece of art... Looks like a bird that's, like, eating a scorpion or some crazy junk like that. That's the kind of art that, like, nobody's interested in except, like, six people. So usually you have to sell it off for a for a loss. 
That's a bullshit. Nobody should be losing money on their efforts. I'm especially, I'm especially good at making sure that that stuff not only gets sold, but gets sold at a good margin. Do you know how important that is? You know how hard it is to get that kind of stuff sold? And I make it happen. Wow. Wow. So, uh, uh, you've dealt in the dealing of, um, magical items, is that correct? Yeah. I know a thing or two about them. How many languages you speak? Dwarven in common. Okay, just asking. Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry. He speaks Dwarven. Actually, both of them speak a few other languages. Uh, looking at it, they both also speak. Uh, he also speaks uh, Elven, uh, Draconic, and uh, Halfling. Uh, ASD will also speak uh, Draconic, uh, Halfling, and. Um, um, Terran. No, not Terran. <laughs> but uh, that's where you get all the good buys. Oh, and Dwarven. Dwarven. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, uh, you know, having worked for an adventure company, an adventure adventurer company works on snack. How can we mitigate our snack costs? Stop snacking. That was my first answer. It seems there's like no, your snack. If you're concerned with your snack costs, you're probably spending a bit too much on snacks. We're actually buying snacks at a bargain basement price. Like literally, the snacks we're eating are dangerous for our health, yet our snack budget is still relatively large. Can we claim that as a deduction on our annual taxes? Of course you can. You can claim just about Excellent. anything on your on your uh, taxes, as long as you know how to put it on the documents correctly. How soon can you start? Does anybody have any objections? I... Yeah, can we interview all of them? <laughs> what? Oh, there's that other one. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, you know. Our guy, uh, I'll call you your guy. They'll be in touch so we can have tea. All right, thanks. Yeah, here, here's two gold piece. Go have an ale. All right. It's the first time he's made money from an interview. And quite a bit, actually. I liked him. All right, uh, Sophia knocks at the uh, the door. Well, we we got to get the sense motive for him. Oh right? yeah, give me the sense motive. Yeah, because there are extra details you get if you succeed that. Oh yeah, this guy's a total fucking black marketeer. How could she be total? Yeah, she can't. She'd have to do something legit, right? Ooh, not so good. Uh, Zug, that one 11 is yours as well. Yep. You can't really get a uh, beat on this guy. That dwarven stone uh, stone face there. Stone continents is very hard to... Yep. Could be good in accountant, right? Yep. All right, so Sophia shows up. And there is a soft knock at the door when she shows up. Entrez-vous, s'il vous plaît. Uh, she will come in. Is she human? She is human. She Man, uh, takes a seat there. at the table. I'm just curious. I don't believe in paperwork, so let's. Uh, I don't believe oh, in Lord. in resumes, so let's 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 sit and chat. You're looking to have your finances taken care of, and I assure you that I know exactly how to handle finances. What's her charisma score? <laughs> um. Are you asking how hot she is? That's exactly yeah, what I'm asking. asking. Sure. That's what he's asking is, yeah. Um, she's reasonably attractive. Okay. Uh, uh, Keep talking. <laughs> so, uh, Sophia, correct? Yes, Sophia. If only I had a resume to remember that. Um... So mm -hmm. talk to us about some past jobs we've done so we know that your your areas of expertise. Well, my previous employers ask I leave out names and some of the details, uh, but I assure you that no one has no one under my watch has ever fallen to fallen to any means of fiscal problems. 
Uh, I keep everything above board as much as I can, and I make sure that we are, that everyone is flowing efficiently, and that money is moving in the ways that it needs to. Huh. Maybe even more efficiently than it needs to. I'm kind of scared. Are uh, you familiar with how successful you, how much of a discount you can cut if you know the right people to talk to and the right times to talk to them and the right words to say to them? Uh, uh, yes. Do you have a photo spread? And if not, are you willing to pose for one? <laughs> Give me a bluff check. Uh, she will, uh, wink back at you. Uh, they may, I, things are up for discussion after, uh, after I'm hired, of course. Ah, okay. You know, I really don't want this company sued for sex discrimination. There's no sex discrimination. He is not doing anything wrong. He is a perfectly the, fine the, gentleman. If the last one wanted to take and have a photo spread, he could have. <laughs> but you didn't ask him for one. He didn't, he didn't come across the kind that would do a photo. <laughs> uh. It was there, it was in his eyes. We spoke metaphorically <laughs> with our eyes. I can assure you, though, that you will not find someone more dedicated to your fiscal responsibility than I. Can I sense motive to determine if that borders on psychopathy? Sure. You can just sense like, motive here regardless. You both can. Yeah, you, and, uh, like you and Zug both can. Since that's part of what you're doing. There you go. Alright. Uh, that is assisted. Um, so, you get the impression that... There's got to be a reason that she's like, so there's got to be a reason she's not willing to discuss her previous employers, uh, what they did. And there's got to be a reason that she's like willing to tout how well she's handled that money. Um, you get the impression that perhaps she's had to like work numbers that are supposed to be on books that aren't supposed that aren't supposed to be doing the things that they're doing. Um, in other words, she's a, she's an accountant chef. <laughs> she's good at cooking the books. Just, just maybe. Um, well, she is a ruxpin, so yeah, of course she is. Come on. She seems to be like laying it down pretty, uh, pretty truthfully. Uh, she does have uh, have skill in account, have good skill in accounting. Uh, she does have like good knowledge of the rules and regulations. She's got reasonable magic knowledge, uh, reasonable knowledge in history, reasonable knowledge in people about town, but she also is pretty gifted in being able to speak to people in the right way and listen when, when people need to be listened to. She reminds me of my grandmother. She was an accountant. You want to spread your grandmother? <laughs> oh man, there's so much to unpack there. <laughs> So much to unpack. Kit wants to play a Rougarou. She came in. She came in to play a Rougarou. <laughs> All right, but those are the three people you have available to you. Um, I think we can spend the next week uh, deciding who those people are going to be. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to pat. Let's pass out some quick experience here. Did uh, Charles just okay. punch himself? The dog. <laughs> Hit me right in the head with her own head. Was... Ooh! Oh. <laughs> like it looked like you punched yeah, yourself. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, you get that like white little flash from like, oh, that hurt. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be getting hit in the head, dog. Go ahead. All right, so each of you can take 200 for role playing. Yay! Uh, and then go ahead and take an extra 300 for uh, basically the the way things have been running. It's a little bit slower uh session today, but you did a good job, uh, Charles, taking care of the. Uh, the situation with the haunting. Good Halloween thing. That is a problem that's been going on since session, like, two. Really? 
Yeah. Tax has been dealing with will saves ever since then. Did you say all of us take 300? All of you can take 500 total. 200 for right, role playing and then 300 for the rest of the stuff. And then by next session, uh, you guys can have some discussion in Discord potentially and decide who it is you guys think is best for um, for the party's accountant. I would go with the attractive one, but that's me. <laughs> we already know where my vote is. Yeah, your your uh, certain parts of the certain special parts of the male anatomy seem to make decisions for hardcore. I don't know why you would say that. <laughs> All right, well, good. It's good show. Yeah. Uh, Any questions before we wrap up? What were their names now. again? Uh, their names are A S T. How do you spell that? A I S T E. Stonefist. Short, short, and sexy. Uh, Petrus Narenhawk. And Sofiha Ruxpin. Sofiha? Yeah, with a J. Oh, nice. It's exotic. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Nice. And exotic. All right. Oh. Two votes for me now. <laughs> I'm voting twice. Maybe just... Maybe you can just keep her on as your personal accountant if she doesn't get hired. Um, yeah, sure. I could use more than one. Just remember, too much Kool-Aid can give a man diabetes. Nice. <laughs> Already there. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Good night, everybody. Uh, we will get you. Steve. Yes.